better. Oh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for sticking with us. It is game number four, Vici versus Secret. It could be the last match of the event. Vici needs one, Secret needs two. What do we got? No techies. That's pretty real. It wouldn't matter anyways. You know, ever since he left the couch, not there. Yeah. So, mm. so Medusa, uh, Razor, uh, Lycan's in the game, Pudge, Io, or Spirit. There's quite a few strong heroes. Quap, Puck, Death Prophet, Ogre. There's a lot of, Tons a of, lot of good heroes forwards. this game. And lots of good supports, too. So, five and four, not really an issue. Mid, not really an issue either. Razor, Puck, Medusa, all good options. You've got a Queen of Pain and Death Prophet, too. Off lanes are lacking a little. There's like Underlord, Bristle. Yeah, get that Puck Nyx, in there, too, I guess. probably. Uh, Dark Seer, I suppose. But maybe lacking in off lanes. So, it's a really nice pool. Yeah. Maybe carries a little bit I think bit Queen low. of Pain is going to be the one that falls into that category of probably doesn't get banned, but will be first or second picked. Yeah, absolutely. I'd put her on like the, the Shadow Fiend level. Yeah. Works pretty much any lane. Has good core potential, can adjust. And one of few heroes that really works well against Razor, as we've seen. Nyx counters so many heroes in this pool, too. Would have been an excellent first pick for Team Secret. There's a couple other heroes that stand out here. The first is um, Ember Spirit. Um, again, if, I think if you get rid of uh, maybe Puck or, or Lion or Ticket yourself, there's not that much that can really threaten this hero. Um, obviously, like, he becomes hard to lane at some points, but he can have a really big impact in the game. Um, the other hero that stands out is, is Tide. I think we've seen T Secret first pick Tide in a pool before. Um, again, like he kind of limits the... He's a really good one-on-one -on -one matchup uh, against most of these heroros. Maybe not against Razor. It's something else that probably be high value. But also limits kind of the safe lane pool a little bit. Okay. And we, uh, we have our Ogre once more, too. So we talk about uh, enabling cores yeah. that maybe don't typically do so well. He's there. And uh, in the same vein of the Ember Spirit having heroes that maybe, you know, those specific counters, Sniper kind of fits that same bill. Uh, mm -hmm. If you don't have the right guys to get on top of him, he can obviously become quite a problem throughout that mid game. You know, a duo that is kind of long forgotten about, the Wisp of Bristleback, uh, kind of sitting up there at the top. A blast from the past that might fly under the radar, potentially. It really depends, I think, on what cores you have. Yeah. Like, if there's a lot of lockdowns or silences or something like that, if you can stop him from turning away from you, then yeah. Um, it's, he's not that scary, but in the right game, he can be good. He, he was used effectively at least cool. once so far. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, now they either get Tide or Ember. The mid one Ember. So, still a little lacking on offlane heroes, I guess. Darkseer, Tide, Clock, Bristle. The sniper ban indicates that they might want an early Razor or Medusa in this draft. Just for the lane advantage, is what you're thinking for the yeah. matchup? I mean, Medusa also fitting into that same category as the Queen of Pain, really highly sought after mid, similar to the Shadow Fiend. Yeah, it's true. Even if the uh, Ember looks like he's like kind of an okay mid game, you, you still have to find him a lane. Slark found that problem last time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if those heroes are left, Ember can't actually uh, do anything through the mid lane. Yeah, he takes some time to come online, but. I think he still has a slight advantage over the Slark in that comparison, where you know you hit level seven and you still have a decent amount of burst damage. If you get some support, Slark still needs a little bit more. And they take out the Tide. Okay, that makes more sense. It's a lot safer to pick Tide, I think, than just like the straight up Ember. Radiant team pick. <laughs> oh, there it is, <laughs> the Medusa. The Medusa. No big surprise, especially because they're on the dire side, so they'll have the advantage of doing the Ancients and the camps that are nearby. So, oh, very think, safe opening. I think another reason is that if you don't, if you decide to ban either the Medusa or the Razor, then one gets snatched up by the other team. But yeah. now with the Tide, you have the option of taking the other one if you'd like. So Razor, and then we talked about the offlane pool. Puck is also still in there. Would not mind grabbing those two for Vici. Uh, and the supports are still pretty open, so no real rush here. Surely Earth Spirit's one of the better supports. But another nice adaptable first pick. Oh, that's good. Okay. Take them together. Yeah. Smart. Uh, for mana drain reasons as well. Very good against Medusa if, if you're survivable enough to stand there and drain the blue. A lot of control in those two heroes. Mm -hmm. Kind of takes away any sort of like Ember Spirit shenanigans as well, just in case they found a way to run the both, but it seems unlikely with the Medusa at this point. Seconds yeah, and again, without that lion there, enables it to run it themselves without yep. too much hard lockdown to worry about. Um, it would also be the case for Queen of Pain. 
I think Secret might be gravitating towards the Rubik, and there he is. The Yapsor Rubik back. again. Good start so far, the puck in the line. Good hero uh, for the defensive null field against puck in line, and also just amazing spells to steal in those team fights. And with him gone, uh, the Earth Spirit you mentioned, probably one of the best position fours. Ten seconds remain. It does remain also pretty classic up against uh, the puck, actually. Maybe if Puppy could play kind of a more poverty Earth Spirit, it is just such a renowned counter to the puck. Mm -hmm. There's also that Winter Wyvern hiding down at the bottom, a support we haven't really talked about too much. That's true. And still Queen of Pain, talked about her earlier, but surely is always a bit of a focus. I feel like Secret could use it a little better, maybe let Medusa be the upfront person, and then she can jump in at the right moment and do a lot of damage. And there is flexibility too to give it to Fada, or just leave it for mid one. But there he is, that's hype man, oh, one of mid one's best heroes, played it so well early on in the tournament. Not fun to be puck against that hero either, the Siri yeah. Jones. I think you almost have to take it here, otherwise I almost guarantee that VG would snap it up. Yeah. And both teams have gone for that instant grab, in a sense, too, so they were kind of both a little bit guarded, but it will be Team Seeker who dive in. I don't know if they'll fully commit to, like, that Iron Shell uh, Ember Spirit. I don't know if it's necessarily that great. It'll depend on the matchup for the Darkseer in the lane. Feels yeah. a little bit too limited for mid-game strength, I guess, until Medusa gets, like, Scotty. So what they could do, they, they could still get the Razor and, and uh, have that bullying lane presence they did last game. Oh, wow, there's Death Prophet. DP again. I like that. She'll be survivable, she does a lot of damage, so... And good pick with the Earth Spirit, I think. So. Yep, pairs nicely with the Lion. Great roamers, a lot of kill potential as they scale upwards. The Secret doesn't have a huge amount of single target kill potential right now, so the Death Prophet kind of works. So even though Beachy Gaming's draft is slightly squishy, I think it can still... Uh, work out pretty good against theirs. So maybe if Secret gets like a, I don't know, would be a good single target. Maybe something like Clockwork feels good to me. A little bit of space control could help kill like Lion or Spirit Death Prophet. Keep Death Prophet away from her teammates, maybe. Feels like Secret has a pretty good insurance policy in the late game. They just need somebody to help make some space and buy them that time to get farmed. Mm -hmm. This is probably a Clockwork here. A um, couple of heroes that supports that he does fairly well against and then being able to create that terrain and kind of protect his Medusa as well. Yeah, I think it's either that Just or Venge, initiation myself. Too. Don't think I was the move. It's oh. Darkseer. Okay, Thanks. so they do go for the Darkseer with the Ember. Lawnmower, Darkseer with the Ember Spirit. I mean, there's basically, there's a possibility that Ember can just get crazy triple kills at like 10 minutes. Yeah. With Darkseer combo, there's always that potential. It's absolutely insane with the early Veil, too. Mm -hmm. It goes that way. Yeah, it does a silly amount of damage. So we still just need our puppy hero here. I kind of agree with Purge. I like the Venge, though the Warlock is also an option. A little sustainability and some nice team fight. Mm. Yeah, it could work. Like having a way to just break up those big team fights could be Shaker. really helpful. I think I agree. Shaker feels kind of good. okay in that traditional, like, TPD way. Yeah, I think they have a lot of options, really. It helps that Vichy's heroes are not super survivable. Poverty Shaker. So, like, there's utility. You can go, you can save your allies with Warlock. You can interrupt them with stuns. There's... Certainly a lot of options, and our Shaker will give them better team fight than the other two. Yeah. Um, not that Rock isn't good, but if he gets like an Echo Slam on Earth Spirit plus one or Lion plus one, that's probably going to be a one team fight. Just vacuum Fishers is such a yeah. simple way to set up fights. And Vacuum too. And really final pick, oh. Morphling for Vici Gaming. All right, a little change of pace. Uh, how do we feel about the Morphling? Okay, well, he fits that same bill of those heroes that uh, maybe need that certain control element or something or certain counters. Uh, and he, of course, has been nerfed as uh, the world was pleased. Right, but, no more uh, morphing through Still stuns. a very strong hero in pools like this. And the only stuns are, what, Earthshaker, so... Pretty and much. the Rubik lift. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, uh, predictions, Jack, mm -hmm. we're going to start with you as you are leading the leaderboards. What do you got, buddy? Who's taking this? Um, I'm going to have to... I like Secret Draft more, but I think Fichi's going to win this game. All right, Purge? Um... I think I'm going to pick Vici for... I think I like their draft a little bit better. I feel like the Morph is a nice pick. They're going to have trouble dealing with it, and if he gets a little out of hand, you can't kill Medusa, but he can deal with the others. I'm going to go with my boy Darks here. Hand on over to Secret. See if they can get it done. All right. I'm going to go for Secret as well, partially because I want this to go to a game five. That's really what I'm looking forward to. Again, we've got two beautiful casters to take this one away. It's going to be Sunspan and Cinderin for game number four. Okay.
So I'm standing here with Cinderin. We got a Morphling, I think for the first time on main stage, if I'm not mistaken. Kind of been, yeah. we, we talked about how we thought it was a bug that he wasn't even showing up in the game. <laughs> but obviously not the case. At least Gaben has something to say about that. So we will be seeing him this time around. What, what do you think about him in this specific lineup? I think this is a really good Morphling game. Um, great last pick from Vici Gaming. They seem to just get some really good heroes out of the pool. Uh, obviously, in this case, uh, since the change to Morph, he can get killed pretty quickly by a Blink Echo Slam. But this is a position 5 Earthshaker. And that hero might not get a Blink Dagger until minute 25. If he's buying wards instead of Yapsor, this will take a very long time to come online. So I think Secret might actually have to play the Rubik as a 5 this game and uh, give Puppy a little bit more farm, at least until the Blink. So I like the Morphling pick. I think. Uh, Vici Gaming's lineup is is good in this game as well, um, and I'm kind of I'm kind of with Jack. I like Secret's lineup too, but I think just from what we've seen today, Vici Gaming has just looked stronger. I mean, it's two on one, and in the first game they kind of threw it away. They looked better in that game as well. So we'll see if um, if Secret can prove us a bit wrong in this game and pick it back up. So of course, when Morphling first came out, since they remade him, or at least his ultimate. Uh, Rubik broke a lot of games. I'm expecting that to not be an issue here. If he steals Morph, is there anything cool he can do? Um, I mean, you can turn into the Ultra CC Master and Lion. Pretty much yes. have everything but the ultimate, so that's pretty damn good, I would think. Obviously, the mobility of Puck and the phase shift to go along with it. I don't know if you, you don't get stone remnants, do you? You do. Really? Yes. Do you get, you get the full so, charges right off the bat? Yes. There's, it's actually wow. a thing. If you're playing Morphling together with Earth Spirit in your uh, pub game or whatever, and you're playing Morphling, you take a level 20 talent, or you can target allies. It's actually sometimes useful to just co turn into Earth Spirit, place a lot of remnants that he can use. If he's running out of remnants and you want to push or take a oh, shot fight, it can be yeah. helpful because he can use them as well. It's just any stone in the game is usable by Earth Spirit. So, so if you turn back, the stones remain. Yes, I believe so. Wow, that's pretty cool. Um, speaking of Earth Spirit, this is a pretty classic uh, matchup. The Rubik versus Earth Spirit as supports. There's a couple of things to mention. First of all, Rubik, of course, a great hero at countering Rolling Boulder. You roll in, you get lifted, and you can get tossed into the tower. Uh, speaking of which, we're actually going to see a little toss on yeah, looking for the Young Eleven. He'll jump away. Um, the other thing, of course, is that Earth Spirit is probably one of the absolute worst heroes for Rubik to play against from a spell steal perspective. All of the spells are garbage. If you steal the silence, you can't. There's no stones for you to use with it. If you steal the roll, it's pretty bad. Oh, mid one, taking some good damage here from Lannan and Young Eleven. They're actually going to commit for this quite a bit, forcing a TP from Puppy. They could be in trouble now. Searing chains. That's a kill. Two. Puck taking a lot of damage. Fissure coming in as well. Young Eleven will be first blooded by Secret, and the pressure is on as Lannan attempts to get out. Yaps are trying to get in. Front, so that rolling boulder will have no effect, but TP support, of course, Young Eleven already spawning since it is very early in the game. So yep. first blood goes the way of secret. And this is something you often will have to do when you're safe laying an Ember. Like you have to be there with two supports for a bit. The heroes innately really weak in lane, and therefore they have re rotated their shaker up here. Um, but yeah, what, what were we talking about? The Earth Spirit spell steals, you steal Boulder Smash, the only thing you can use it for is for, like, once again, you don't have stones, so Magnetize is also a pretty weak steal in that regard. Oh, this Good crash. Oh, yeah, actually, my God. goodness, that's a second death for Young Eleven. He was not ready for the burst damage coming in from that Fate Bolt. Had four stick charges and was able to jaunt for, like, about half a second there, but thought he was going to be fine. Got caught off guard. And already pick it up and end his rune. Of course, you're talking about how Rubik not great against, uh, as far as stealing spells against the Earth Spirit, but of course, if he does get Morph, how easy is Morph to steal? It's pretty instant cast, and then depending on what spells you've stolen as the Morphling, can just make sure that he can't take that ultimate from you, right? I mean, I guess you can just cast Morph and then very quickly activate uh, Attribute Gain, right? Then oh, that's true. That'll be the yeah. one Rubik will steal, which Rubik also likes that one, so it's kind of nice to go max strength on Rubik. Uh, don't go full agility. Wait, you wouldn't be able to do that though. You're stealing, a, you're becoming a different hero temporarily. Oh, right? I'm talking about stealing the attribute shift spell. Oh, right? oh I see. Yeah, I that, that's you could still steal that, right? I mean, that's the dream. You can. I love doing You that, can, yeah. right? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Why not? You used to do that at least. I don't yeah, think Yeah, you just go full strength and you're yeah. like that the rest of the game. It's great. Have you seen the. It's one of the most watched Dota videos. The I sun think. strike in base over and over? Yes, no, I've not seen. that one. Oh, okay. Never go full agility? Yeah. Have you seen that? Oh, that's the one. Oh, okay. Yeah. Telekinesis. Puppy looking for a fissure, but he's going to get impaled first. There's the Hex to follow. Lanham and company should be able to take him out, and they do. Lanham will be the trade with that last slide of Fist coming out from mid-one. So a one-for-one trade. 
And Young 11, of course, only level 2, 5 CS in that top lane. But in the mid lane, what do we have here? Ace, he's sitting on 11 and 5 versus Ori. There's 11 and 5 as well, actually. So quite even to start this game. How do you like this matchup? We haven't really seen... I mean, we've seen Death Prophet have some horrendous games in this tournament, but uh, versus the Medusa specifically in a 1v1 scenario. Uh, I think it's a, I would maybe give Medusa a slight edge in this lane, but Death Prophet can generally hold her own. She can push the way with Crypt Swarm, and if she gets in close to Medusa, she can actually pressure her a decent amount. So uh, maybe it's, it's seems pretty fair to me, just on first thought. I don't think it's, let's just call it 50-50. It's like 50 -50. a very, it's a very insignificant advantage that you have in that lane, I would say. So Ori's doing well, obviously 10 denies the big difference here in mid compared to the 5 of Medusa, so we'll out-level her by a decent oh, amount. Paparazzi waveforms out into the safety of his tier 1 tower and the health salve will heal him up very, very full. Mid one in the meantime, the top lane pops the flame guard, but that's not going to stop the auto attacks. The wand keeping him healthy though. And he's going to need a health salve or have to go back to base. In fact, he will just TP back. Ace in the meantime taking the spirit siphon, got TP in the form of Earthshaker. Looks like Puppy will cancel that TP though. And Ace. Sitting on very low HP and low mana right now. And yeah, the absorber. Good pressure here. Vici Gaming are making sure to make moves on multiple lanes. They've so far accumulated about a thousand gold lead just from raw farm in lanes. This Morphling has been doing a great job against Darkseer. So Darkseer, obviously, the thing about this matchup, Darkseer against anything, is that if you're very good at knowing the Iron Shell timings, when to deny, like how fast it ticks, you just practice that a bit. Uh, a lot of heroes actually do pretty well against Darkseer, and Morphling is no exception to top lane. Yeah, I think lane Lanham him. is fine here. Yep, he does have support. will get thrown away. Three so, members of Ichi there. Morphling has really high base damage. He morphs to uh, full agility in the lane and just starts denying creeps and... Uh, Darkseer gets severely outleveled and outfarmed in this lane, as it looks right now at least. I'm surprised it went this far. I don't think Darkseer should be listing the lane this hard, but just shows how well Paparazzi is doing down here on that Morphling. And in addition to that, Morph likes to get health regen, right? Like you want to get a, maybe a... We'll wait on that for a second. Fissure. Yeah, with the Fissure. Spirit Siphon slowing him down a little bit more. Lan M. Yeah, he can't continue Trying to follow this. through, has the Orb of Venom, but not going to be enough to catch up to that, that big fat Earth Shaker. Um... So Darkseer often wins his lanes by consistent harassment with the Iron Shell, just pressuring all the time, tossed, uh, tossed into tower, he's going to be fine, Young Eleven will join out. But Morphling can just morph to full agility and heal up way more effectively with, with region than other heroes relatively uh, by just, you know, using that salve on very low base HP or having a ring of health, perseverance. Uh, this is going so well for Vici Gaming right now, They're actually just winning this laning stage really hard. I wonder what secret... See, that's the problem here. They're, they're yeah, supposed to a Shaker the, Rubik. How the are they going to dominate I lanes? Now? I don't think I've seen CS discrepancy like this in a long time. 43, 25, and the next on the list for for Secret is 22 and 7. That is huge. His top lane looks like mid one's in a bit of trouble. He's going to get stunned. Gets off the Searing Chains, though. Nice fissure from Secret. Mid one will live as a result. In fact, Hell Salvian is going to get canceled, though, to Young Eleven's right click. So, heads up play from him. And Paparazzi completely left alone here. He forced Darkseer out of the lane. He played an aggressive move with uh, the waveform over the top of Fata. Got multiple attacks in before he surged away. And now Fata has to go to base and Paparazzi starting to deal damage to this tower. And with the Earth Spike onto Puppy and the roll in from Lan M trying to block him to a high degree. Gets the Fissure off him. He will limp away. The Morphling is such an interesting hero now though. You, you can become Darkseer, put Ion Shell on yourself and then just go back as Morphling and just wreck him. Yeah, and surge cool. yourself. yourself in the meantime. Yeah. That exact play is not available yet. He hasn't skilled Morph a lot of the time. We say, oh, hang on. Careful, Paparazzi. Well, it's just going to use a Tango. Heal up very quickly here. Um, but yeah, most of the time we see Morphlings max out the Attribute Shift and the Waveform first. And then secondarily, maybe one point Morph on level 9 happens sometimes. But a lot of the time we also see them skill Adaptive Strike instead. Yeah, so sneaks into the jungle. I don't think Paparazzi had vision of that. Not sure if they can actually get any kind of a kill potential here. No mana morphed. to speak of onto Fata. And of course, Telekinesis is available, but Paparazzi is very difficult to kill. Of course, you can't, you can't change your stats while stunned anymore. But of course, how many stuns are we looking at? For Shaker and Rubik. And neither of which are really that long of stuns. 
Go with stone gaze if you can somehow get that off. I, <laughs> That's how bad a reaction action time do you have if you get stone gaze? Sometimes and not get you it. don't notice, you know, that hideous woman. That's in your games. You. Well, you never know. Never oh, know these here again, exorcism. Double damage of exorcism popped. What? Did really nothing. for no reason, but it's gonna go th they could it. go for this bottom tier one as a oh. result. I'll go down. Could have paparazzi take the tower a bit if they want. Has the Ring of Health, they will force out a cliff. Now comes the Creep Wave. Secret seem to want to defend this, yes, actually. They do. Ace still with that double damage, a big Mystic Snake clearing the wave. And Fata ready to go Fissure on two. Let's see if it doesn't look like Vici wants to pursue any further, though. They will roll out to safety. 2k lead for them right now. Young Eleven has the coil in his repertoire now. Mid one still not level six in this lane. So can't take advantage of the mobility that comes with being Ember Spirit. And Yapsor, like you said, kind of a greedy support in general, but maybe this game can't really afford to do that. We'll have to remain, I and mean, it kind of remains to be seen whether that's actually going to be the case. Uh, Puppy right now, of course, at the bottom of the net worth. I think a it's a substantial margin. I really think it's a problem for Secret this game if they don't get a blink on Shaker. There's some games in the past we've seen poor Shakers do a lot with Fissure. I feel like they need Echo Slam this game to win fights. Like the Morphling will be way too big of a problem if they can't reliably chain stun him with that. Fissure is great, but do you, do you feel like they can burst this Morphling during a Fissure and maybe a Rubik Lift perfectly chained? I don't think so. Not later in the game anyway. It's going to be too tanky. Yeah, most likely. So. Well, Remnant's online now for mid one, so see if you can use that in an aggressive manner to get some kills for Team Secret is... Who's happy with this right now? Obviously you're talking about Vici having the, the advantage early on in this game, but does Secret still feel comfortable going forward, or do they need to start getting a little bit aggressive? Of course, Puppy's not even close to the Blink Dagger, as, as we've alluded to over and over, but... Do they need to get more aggressive in these engagements? I think so. Um, I feel like mid one is the hero that can uh, equalize this game with a couple of good plays from the Ember. They can get something done. I think he wants his level 7 at the very least, maybe even his level 8 before he starts moving, though. Actually, trading with Young Eleven, forcing out the coil. Yeah, of course, with a few abilities, you can get out. out of that pretty easily, as long as you're not silenced. And meanwhile, in the bottom lane, we see the... Oh my god, Morphling gets destroyed. The telekinesis into the waveform, okay. could not attribute shift in time. I was not expecting that kill, but he's playing with full fully agility. out, out, fully out max agility. Yes. Maybe a little bit cocky, you know, you can maybe have 10 strength more than that and then you don't die. Secret take advantage of the greed. Good kill for them, they're gonna start doing structural damage too. They have a siege creep with this wave, so pretty much perfect timing. But I don't think Vici are gonna just let them have this. Lanham is in position, Morphling will respawn soon and TP bottom. And that should be the end of it. They're actually not even trying here. I'm just going to get XP. He's going to be surrounded here. Puppy's going to find him. Gets silenced, though, thanks to the waning rift. Young 11, no coil for 19 seconds. He's going to get Searing Chained. Has to use Illusory Orb to get out. Fissure won't hold him long enough. But yeah, I agree. Once, if Puppy's able to get that Blink Dagger at some point, that's when you can actually start chain stunning to a more consistent manner, at the very least, because yeah. that's kind of their issue right now. Oh, TP top, Rubik. No, cancel it. A lot of canceled TPs. Yeah. In the last few games. We have. It's, uh, I feel like Vici's kind of philosophy around playing the oh. games, what it looks like. Fenrir just is... leveled up on that creep that Puppy killed. <laughs> <laughs> thanks, thanks for the, thanks for the old bro. Didn't get to use it though. Um, oh, bottom lane again. Yeah. Paparazzi. But... Paparazzi immediately 2,700 health. Thank you for that, Gabe Newell. <laughs> <laughs> no, and down to 260 now. There's the coil. See if Paparazzi wants to commit here or not. Waning Rift applied as well. He's not really doing that much damage. Adaptive Strike literally does nothing. As Yapsor feeling pretty confident right now. Had the wave for him. Young 11. What did he steal? Yapsor gets the telekinesis off. Looks like phase it was shift. just the phase shift and not able to use it in time. But here it comes mid one. Able to clean up the puck. Looking for Paparazzi as well. But that is a tanky mother effort. See who wins this 1v1 battle of the ages. Ori has TP'd in the adaptive strike, doing a nice Good kind search. of stun, but won't be enough to actually find a kill. Nice quick play there from Paparazzi, morphing into the Rubik, using Fate Bolt, morphing back and getting Attribute Shift running quickly enough before the Ember started to put some pressure on him. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like you can tell in this game how, how Vici are thinking about just Dota in general. They're playing very pressure-orientated, they keep 
forcing heroes to rotate. We see, like you said, multiple cancel TPs more or less every game from Secret because they feel under pressure. They have to always defend towers, defend heroes that are getting ganked by Vici. And it's also just a result of the draft, really. Like, Secret's supports are not the best for this kind of playstyle with the cores that they have. If they had, like, Shaker and a Quap mid, for example, and all of a sudden they can force TPs and pressure. But Shaker Medusa, not that likely to put pressure on the mid hero. And Shaker Darkseer, not that good together either. So Vici are kind of dictating the whole tempo of this game, and Secret were playing catch-up for quite a while. And Ori and company taking out that Centaur. Here from Fata, but he's 0-4-4-0 build on Darkseer, so doesn't really have much to do here except farm up the creeps. And he's going to go away from mid. Puppy's still being chased? No. Young 11, he forces a TP, though, yet again. Earth Spike Fenrir. Looks like he might be the sacrificial lamb, but at any time in the mid lane, a telekinesis on a few heroes as Fenrir finds his way into the grave. And it looks like it's a one-for-one -one trade across the map. As Fata does drop to Paparazzi. So Paparazzi right now, second in net worth, only to Ori on the Death Prophet. But ever so quietly, Ace is getting a lot of farm. Let's not forget this Medusa. <laughs> Just sitting at the best plug. Pl okay. Um, <laughs> He's just, uh, wait, I'm hearing a coil, hang on. Puppy, TP oh, out, he'll die rift. Oh, the last millisecond able to finish him off. And that gives... He did not Earth need Spirit to, Shannon, though. No. Do you know why? Do what? He didn't need to take that kill with Earth Spirit, because coil deals damage when In he Fountain, yes. Yeah, so he would have died anyway. That's true. So he got really excited over nothing. I That's do that fake hype right there. Sorry. I've learned from all the other casters in this scene. <laughs> Fought an Ion Shell <laughs> That's true. It's actually one of those things that's it's difficult to remember sometimes because it's been like that for so long. It's also difficult to assess really how high the damage amount is. You know, it's been changed. The old coil dealt way less damage on break yeah. than the new one, but it's a really substantial amount when you try to TP out. True. Well, smoke rotation from Vici Gaming. Let's see if they get anything out of that. They're smoking to the, pu the pushed wave top with the puck. If they find Puppy here, he is already more or less doomed. Yep, already uses Fissure. He's going to get hexed into the roll, into the death. Vici Gaming with a 2k lead, and they're going to position themselves to be able to take this tier 2 tower secret. See if they try to defend this or not. They're going to see the ward play, so that's at least an easy D ward for later. Fenrir taking the fade bolt to the back of the head. But still feeling okay thanks to the urn. It looks oh. like Ace is just going to get this solo tower in the mid lane. That's very nice for Secret. Fortification is popped. Might just get, he's probably just going to back, but knowing that most of these heroes are top, feels pretty safe to secure that for himself. Yeah. If Vichy don't get this tower, this was not that good of a rotation. Well, they're trying now. Oh, Medusa TPing in. Has Stone Gaze, of course. Searing Chase coming in. Lanham extremely low to start this fight. He's going to drop right off the bat. Impale comes in as well. There's the Fissure onto two. Exorcism is activated. A triple silence into a triple coil. Young 11. Triple kill for Ace, though. Just turns it around. Yapsor able to get a couple, but it's a three for three across the board. It looks like mid one is next on the, the plate here for Vici Gaming. Adaptive Strike will stun for a little bit, but the two cores of Vici are super healthy, and they take the tier, ta tier 2 tower. Oh, damn. Pavarazzi did so much in that fight. Turned into Ember, used Flame Guard, got a double chains combination, turned into Morphling, waveform across three heroes. That fight for me was all the Puck and Morph combining in the beginning. Secret had a great start to it. They got the Earth Spirit kill almost instantly. He got one stun off, but nothing to go with it. No sounds, no magnetize. And they still end up getting the draw there, plus a tower, just because of their raw power between those two. And of course, Ori. Quietly in that fight, unfocused, so exorcism will do the rest. We talked about the, the, the power of the puck coddle combo. Maybe not quite as strong, but adaptive strike yeah, into sure. Dream Coil, not too shabby to be able to finish off one of these secret heroes that can also kick with Earth Spirit. Yep, true that. You got a couple of abilities to be able to reposition heroes, always always helpful to have. It's actually very deceptive how much that break damage is, yeah. uh, especially once you get that Aghanim Scepter. Pretty ridiculous spell with the right hand. I'm not going to read that. It's too long. <laughs> Net worth, though, still 2k lead for Vici Gaming as both Ori and Paparazzi sitting quite pretty. What does Medusa have right now? Dragon Lance. The typical. Mask of Madness building into four staff. The cookie cutter Medusa build, if you will. Yeah, it's pretty standard. Um. Let's see. How many Mid Ancients tower? have they been stacking for him, though? I just saw him take out an Ancient stack now, but... They've done two stacks at least, maybe three. 
I haven't been playing, paying that close attention. There's been a lot of fighting going on from Vici, so wonder how much information they really have at the same time, because they've been making all these moves, but not keeping Medusa in too much check. So it has been getting good farm. It's continuing here. The four staff only a couple hundred gold away. But it's still, I think Morphling has a pretty good matchup between those two. It's one of the better carries, just being super mobile. Um, deals a lot of single target damage, obviously, something Medusa doesn't like. Their mana burns are only really the mana drain, which is not that good. So that's uh, good news for Ace, at least. And Paparazzi has Lincolns. We'll be going for the E-Blade, and that is not good news for Yapsor. That is one of those here. Of course, he does have Null Field, but yeah. it's, what is that, 5%? It's a really good value point in the one. It's 10, but like, regardless, it doesn't matter if he has, has it on aggressive, right? Nope, the Coil top lane. Looks like they're going to find Earthshaker with that Echo Slam, though, into the Fissure. Is this going to be enough to get the kill with the Fade Bolt? It is. And Secret turning that around nicely, a much needed kill for them as they're looking to bring this net worth lead back into their favor. The Paparazzi finally going to get this tier 1 tower. I'm actually a little yeah. bit surprised they didn't finish this off earlier. That is true. Took them quite a while. It's a courtesy mainly of the Darks here, obviously keeping the push going. Getting the Helm of the Dominator to skip waves with as well. And that, wow, that adaptive dealt a lot of damage. Is that a Helm of the Dominator creep? Yeah. That was a Dominator. Thanks, Slax. I can read that one. Oh, Ori is going to find a Mystic Snake in the back of the head. He's going to pop the BKB with the Exorcism. There's the Yules. On to Fada. He takes... Oh, my God. That burst damage is insane. No Echo Slam available. That Remember? is true. Lanam jumps in. Puppy looking for potential Fissure here. There's a Telekinesis. Stolen Coil. Yep, stolen Coil. He actually steals the Attribute Shift. Looked for him to be super tanky in this game now. If yep. that is still in the game, that is. We'll it find is. out soon enough. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right now, Yaps are sitting on 2,000 health. That is so nice. So, of course, for, armor, for those that don't know, uh, yeah, obviously you lose the armor and you're not going to be able to get great attack speed from Rubik anymore, which is a real shame. But you do keep that stat gain forever. So just don't misclick is what we're trying to say. Yeah. That's and that that, be, that, that uh, can't uh, be underrated either because of Null Field on top of that. Now it's going to be much harder to burst down. It is. I don't think I've seen him play with the defensive Null Field yet, though, in this game. He keeps it on aggressive. Mm. They obviously have really good synergy with the aggressive. Field as well, Mystic Snake, the Ember Spirit damage, Echo Slam, Ion Shells. They have so much magic damage in their oh, lineup. They can so actually the turn this team. around. Nicely done from Vici. Baiting that poor mid one Ember Spirit. Same time bottom paparazzi. Double damage. Yeah, he's scary. He is scary. Has the Ghost Scepter work with not too far away from finishing the E-Blade completely. Yeah. I think his goal in every fight is just to blow up Shaker, actually, if he can. I think that's his best target. Uh, without the Shaker, Secret's AoE control is not that good. They have Vacuum Wall, and that's kind of it. Um, nothing else is that reliable. Sure, you can Telekinesis a guy and maybe toss him into the team, but that is very situational and very positioning dependent. Ember's Light changes something, but there's Yules on the Radiant side already on the DP. Puck's next item is also the Yule Scepter. Earth Spirit's next item, you'll never guess, it's also a Yule Scepter. And Lion has 60 gold, so he has a <laughs> bit of way to go. But He has a smoke, he's fine. <laughs> Easy peasy. Two ops and sentries on him. I wonder if Vici want to exorcism for the next Roche here, actually. I think they're in a position of power now where they can kind of enforce that play to happen. And if Secret run into them without good vision, could be in trouble. But Puppy's Blink Dagger, of course, has not been available now. Oh, nice deny by Ace. <laughs> Wrecked. Denies the ward. No XP for you, no gold for you, Fenrir. But still, this puts uh, Vici in a very good position here around the Roche, but they're actually going to just go for it right now. So Yeah, and Secret not very close right now. What level does the is Morphling able to take over teammates? Is it 20? 20, yeah. yeah. So imagine jumping in as Puck. I don't You don't think know, it's that good? I don't know if that's the spell you should take here. Waveform attacks targets is also really good. Oh, that's true. It's the same one. I forgot they it's, changed that. It's yeah. a good talent. Um, well, Exorcism allows them to get the Aegis. On to Paparazzi, so good luck killing him twice. Yeah, it's going to be really Secret position hard. themselves to maybe initiate onto Ori. This could be a big kill. He pops the BKB immediately and the Yules. Exorcism still going. Lots of damage being applied to the poor oh, Yapsor. He, he, he dies. Oh. Silas now onto Darkseer. They're just going to right click him with that Spirit Siphon. And there's the coil to ensure that that will be a second kill going in their favor. And another Sun coming in this time on Ace. Gets off the Mystic Snake. How much is it going to help? Mid one and company. Slight change back coming up. in. Oh, Paparazzi failed it. Not able to. Only level two slight. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's difficult to 
to actually pull off in that oh, case. Fissure connecting. Considering that that echo slam was only on the ground from Poppy, I, I wonder what he got cancelled by or if he just uh, messed it up. But with that two for one trade, is actually not the end of the world for Secret. That could have gone way worse, especially considering Ori got the BKB off with good timing and still had duration that, that after was exorcism. Very fast reaction. Yeah. Very fast reaction. But Age is still online, of course, so yeah. Vici is sitting quite pretty at the moment. 5k lead at 23 minutes. And so I guess in that case, I guess we should be expecting the, uh, the level 20 talent to be the other one. The waveform attack target. It's pretty damn good. It, it's not the worst target allies game. Like you yeah. said, the oh, bottom lane, speaking of yeah, mid one, oh, a lot of shifted. damage. Phase shifted completely. Fissure comes in. It's only going to connect on Fenrir. And that means mid one is now on the retreat. The coil will be applied again. Does he have an arcane rune or something? He just used that. Illusory Rug comes in. And down goes the mid one again, this time at the hands of Fenrir. Puppy looks to be fine as he ends in the fog of war. My goodness. Lots of burst damage from Vici, from several heroes, in fact. Well, Ace <laughs> jumping slams. in onto, or Paparazzi jumping onto Ace. There's the E-Blade coming into effect and the Adaptive Strike as well. Not quite enough to actually kill Ace, but still doing substantial damage and forcing him away from the Ancients, which is definitely not what he wants. He's going to wait for him in, being very cocky. Oh my god! The wall into the Fade Bolt. He, was, he had a lot of agility, not a whole lot of strength, but that was just the Aegis. That wall illusion is dangerous as well. Gotta be careful. If that illusion comes out, I think Vichy need to kill it with Mana Drain or a couple of attacks. Yeah, get it's some really farm hard. here. Get some farm on that, that Dark Seal. Oh yeah. Oh okay. yeah, that's nice. That's a good illusion. Pretty strong illusion. Good, clean, young illusion right there. Still got some kick in him. Puppy Invis wants to ward. Might try for... I don't know if they can set a fight up here. Yeah, Puppy. Of course, with Blink. He's going to go for the Enchant Totem the on the Courier. We'll get it. Nothing was on it, but still good experience, good gold. The Yapsor seals Crypt Swarm. Gets the Telekinesis off. Ace has Stone Gaze available if they want to try to defend this. So he took Waveform and text targets. So yeah. No need to cover the... Which one will he take? Oh, <laughs> well, we can't even look at the potential place. How boring. It makes the fight very confusing, so I'm kind of thankful, actually. <laughs> You don't like two illusory orbs on top no, of each other? No, it's, it's very difficult to cover. So Medusa, Scotty is almost complete. That is the one hero on Secret side that is doing well this game. Ace has a lot of farm, but he has a lot of weight to carry. Both Ember and Darkseer are very Mid far behind. One, Yules in the air. He gets silenced. Another Yules, though. Making sure he can get unsilenced, and he's just going to get out with that remnant. Nicely yep. done. Of course, Yules is a great counter to Flame Guard in general, but when he has one of his own, he typically can get away in most situations. Yep. Now the question is, what does he go for next? What's next on the table for mid one? Now that he has the drums and defensive capabilities of this Vagulus. Radiant's queued up right now. Um, I don't know if that's the best choice in this game, but at the same time, I feel like Secret might just have to play for an ultra late game, see if he can wave clear, get more farm, have the blind against the Morphling in fights, obviously nice, but he has no defensive item apart from Yule, so he can get killed in the blink of an eye. If he gets stunned by Lion and blown up by Morphling, he actually dies from full HP if he doesn't have Flame Guard on, so he needs to be careful. Ace, only 100 away from finishing that Scotty. Going to be quite nice I for him. Bought a veil. I'm going for Veil, so kind of... 7 minute Veil. Yeah, that's, that's a little bit surprising. Typically, well, that's... Trying to enable first. his team, I guess. It's like, we're far behind. We're going to need a good fight. This is the most cost-effective item I can get us right now for the next fight. Ace definitely finishing the Scotty here, as there is a smoke on both sides, actually. See if they can find each other. Doesn't look to be the case, at least not yet. Well, Morphling is actually really far away from his team right now. He's all the way back in base, waiting for his BKB. Ten gold to go. Another big item. There's the Scotty. And that's the goal call for Secret. They know they just hit a timing, so time to go. Oh, Searing Chains. Oh, Puppy comes nice with the Enchant Totem. They're going to clean up the puck. The Echo Slam was I used. I a Centaur stomp in the back, too. Yeah, Fenrir getting harassed. Looks like the Earth Spike was stolen by Yapsil, and Paparazzi still waiting for that VKB in base. Can't tick the gold any faster, unfortunately, for him. That was a nice combination play, though. Slight Chains into Fissure, into Blink Echo. Quite a lot expended there from Puppy, obviously, but it's a core kill. Uh... <laughs> That's true. That, that, that is our instant replay capability here. High production value on Moonduck. But, 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 but why did Shaker kill a lion form. when it was a puck? I mean, he, he, had to put, he had to do that in advance. He had to guess. So it's a 50-50. You know? Great. <laughs>
close enough. They pocket look pretty lion. similar, puck and lion. <laughs> it's all good. Slacks has his issues, but yeah, we, absolutely we love him anyway. So Blink Dagger looks to be next for Yaps are not not even close though. Um, but we did talk about the the Blink Dagger on Puppy. He didn't get it at that bad of timing, so it got like minute twenty. This could be worse. I mean, Definitely Puppy that worse. like generally he's position five, like you said, so he's going to get it at a later duration, typically. Uh, Butterfly next on the table for Ace. And yeah, it's good this game. Yeah, it blocks that waveform attack's targets. Pretty good. Nice. Yeah, it's pretty good. How fast does that attack, actually? Is it just your regular attack speed, I assume? Uh, it just, I think it just automatically attacks the target so when waveform crosses. It's one attack as you waveform? I believe so. Yeah, okay. I think it hits once on every target. Which doesn't sound like much, but when Morphling has 300 damage, it's... Yeah. It adds up. It definitely adds up. He's going to run into mid one. It pops to BKB. Oh. That's a that big was deal. Really different. I think he, he was just scared the whole team was there, but there's absolutely no reason to do that from our perspective. And of course, values his life a lot. Oh, Missed the coil. coil expended as well. He'll be able Not to, be able to cancel this TP from Puppy. Oh, he does find vision, though. Yapsor will be able to get out, but still, that's a coil down. That's a BKB duration. I mean, not too bad. It could be one worse. Pull, one definitely could kill. be worse. I think. That's a net gain for Secret overall. During all of this movement from Vici Gaming, Secret have been pushing out both mid and bottom. So see, Vici will have to go back on the defensive and protect these lanes. So they didn't really progress out on the map from that one move at all. Yeah, and creating a lot of space. Fata, of course, has the Greaves, Helma Dominator as well. And once he gets that Blink Dagger, this becomes super scary, especially for Morphin, like we saw, that illusion can wreak havoc on himself if he's not careful. And he can set up Puppy. I think that's the bigger thing. If they can get a two or three hero back, e in back Echo. Oh boy. All right, that's called burst damage as Lan M. Looks like they're gonna find Yaps, or at least that is the goal. Aggressive Yules from Yaps. I don't think they're gonna go any further though. Look we'll it out. He's so tanky on Ruby. Like it's, he... it's crazy that Ember Spirit can die that fast though. That was basically two spells. Yep. Morphling for you. Remember? People said this hero was dead. It's this is dead. Captain's Wrath, though. Any hero can work. Except for techies, apparently. We just never see that one. In the right situation in Captain's Mode, this hero can still be extremely powerful. And yeah, as, I... like a, as the last pick of the draft, which it was in this case, there are still games in Captain's Mode where one team maybe has like two stuns or not that much luck. Oh, the exorcisms pop Ori with the BKB as well. The coil and the finger of death being used They're using to try to take down this Medusa. A triple silence, but the Greaves gonna bring him back into the game. But this Ember Spirit is dead. Oh, or, sorry, the the Medusa is dead. Has buyback available. is gonna be right, next on the list. <laughs> Wow. And Vici are just cleaning up these fights. As long as they're grouped up, it's very difficult to stop them. This tier two tower looks to be dead. Echo Slam's still available though, so. That was even with a missed E Blade. They E Bladed the Dark Seer at the same time they Yuled him. Oh, and really? Yeah, and then he came down and just died anyway to ghosts almost immediately. Vici's lineup has so much damage right now. They actually just straight up ran into a Medusa with full mana and HP with zero mana drain and killed her through all of her de defense. I was like, right now, that's like six or seven thousand damage they just dealt there, or even more. And Young Eleven, only about fifteen hundred away from finishing Aghanim Scepter, and we've seen the power of the coil so far. If you get a Medusa in that coil, you, you kind of want to force Staff her out into the opposite direction. But if you do that, it's going to take substantial damage, which we saw in that fight. It's just going to get worse with the Aghanim Scepter, and even a BKB won't stop. So yeah. And that's the the power of the Ag. As Fenrir gets oh, an impale, they yeah, they're gonna get the stun off and the silence coming through. But the Yules, see if you can get anything off after the fact. The coil right. is placed. That was a stolen one. Fenrir's just gonna have to wait it out. But they do find the kill on Yapsor. And they might actually push high ground with this. It might I have to sound say, like v that. Much, Vici but... in this series has entire tournament. In fact, well, yeah. I shouldn't say entire tournament. It's basically the playoffs. It's Puppy, you are dead. Died to the auto attack of the waveform. Thank God he took that skill. Who knows if he got that kill anyway. Fata getting spirit siphoned, but will TP to safety. No secondary lockdown after the Yules, so we'll just TP out. If Ori can somehow catch him with the sounds and then cast spirit siphon and save the Yules, that can be a kill next time, but obviously very difficult in the heat of the moment. Well, there's still going to be a tower for Vici Gaming here. This tier 2 is absolutely undefendable for Secret. They will have to resort to holding their high ground, and I think Vici will force them to. They still have their Aegis on the Morphling, they have the Cheese on DP, ultimate available in 10 seconds. This is a really good time for them to go high ground, especially if Morphling just walks a little bit to the top left and realizes that he can double his damage, but didn't find that. The crazy thing about this game is Vici, of course, with his 12k lead, 
Fenrir is by far the least farm hero in yeah. the game. Yeah. Playing the position six right now, essentially. Yeah, he has very little on that line, but that's what's really impressive about Fenrir as a player, how much he gets done with so little. It's a lot of experience playing years of position five. I don't know if years he's ever... Years of abuse. <laughs> has he ever played another role? I'm trying to remember. Um, I mean, some games he'll go four. Right? I guess so, in this team, speaking, like but... a few times he plays four, that is true. But he has never played anything else than support, I believe. I can't not, remember not seeing. Not in my memory. But um, and a lot of the old school players have played uh, multiple roles, but Fenrir has really stuck to that support position. So. Bless his heart. He's done, he's done a lot this game. I praised him for his Bane plays in the earlier game as well. Like just doing so much with minimal resources is not easy. Scotty now picked up by the Morphling. So he is going to hit like even more of a truck if, it, if he wasn't already. So strong now. Almost level 25 as well. Uh, I think in this game he will probably go for the two waveform charges. That's pretty strong. But the uh, double adaptive can be good sometimes. Actually, yeah, you could go both, I suppose. <laughs> it's okay, Slacks. Take it easy. Just use that bucket if you need to. Ember, Spirit, and company. How, how good is the high ground for Secret? I mean, they have the Echo Slam. They have Stone Gaze, obviously, and the Vac Wall. They have the Wombo Combo capabilities, but it's all about Vici Gaming, grouping up to be able to allow something like that to happen. And so far, the, w the way that they played in the oh, execution they found is they're going to find the He's going to get blown up. Not quite enough damage yet. But the Crypt one will finish him off. The wall comes oh, in. It's going to hit the Morphling. Well Fatha's going to pay for the price. Is Echo Slam coming in? Only hitting two. One with BKB. So that means Puppy will fall next in all likelihood. A nice stun onto Fatha on the backside as well as the Spirit Siphon and company is going, doing absolute work. Next on the list is the Ace Medusa. And this will be a huge kill for Vici Gaming. And they do so. Double kill for Paparazzi. And it's going to be tough to stop them. Of course, buybacks are there for no Secret. Waves. This full backdoor protection. Right. They don't have a wave in base, so they, they might not even have might, to buy back I mean, to Medusa. He could still potentially take that, honestly. Ah, it's pretty rough. Can't do it without the ghosts, and they're expiring now. So, so. he did go for the double wave form, by the way. Yeah. Very, very strong. Aegis Ma only mouse over that for additional information, Pitmoko. You can see, not the talent, the, the buff he has with two waveforms. There you go. Dota tooltip modifier number four. <laughs> Very yeah, nice. Absolutely great. That's good for the noobs to understand a little bit yep. better. Is this tier 3 tower is dead? Mid Rax looks to me next. Question is, will they be buying back on anybody? No Echo Slam right now. Medusa, of course, no Stone Gaze. The very least mid Rax is Vici's. Right, they're going to position themselves for the bottom now. They might give up two lanes to not buy back their Medusa here. Maybe they feel like they can't fight anyway. We'll see what their decision is. And this tower, at the very least, is dead. Puppy comes in with a beautiful fissure. They're going to blow up the Morphling, but of course, that is just the Aegis. Ori pops the BKB. Looks like they're going to work on the poor Amber Spirit. Buyback was used by Medusa. The question is, will Vici Gaming back up or not? Ori continuing with the Spirit Siphon. Looks like Ace is going to continue to deal damage. Gets a Hurricane Pike off, but Paparazzi is there. Puppy and company, they are able to take out Lion, but he buys back into the game. Meanwhile, looks like the Stone Cave is being applied to Ori. <laughs> they'll ring around the Rosie, and they're going to deal substantial damage as he's in stone form. Pops that Shiva's, though. is very tanky. Gets the Yules off as well. Paparazzi continue to right-click. If they're able to take out Medusa, this will be game in all likelihood. It's going to be close. He's extremely low. Will they finish him off? They do. That is a dieback, but they do get Paparazzi. Nope. He's still at half HP. Waveform again. Puppy. Very low gets surged away. They will finally, finally get this Morphling. A triple kill for mid one, but a very expensive one at that. Ultra kill, in fact. So secret technically hold, but it was very expensive. And all of the kills going to mid one is the exact thing they don't want because he has buyback penalty during that entire fight. So that's true. He got whoa, very low there. Whoa there. Whoa there. He puppy really hates those creeps. He echo slammed the shit out of them. <laughs> Jesus. Good lord. So you might just feel like you know the next fight is not coming in a hundred seconds with all these death timers. So this is like e even if that was a mistake, that's about as good of a mistake as you can have on on wasting echo slam when the entire enemy team is dead. Yeah. Um, Oh, yeah, that was he just wants to use it. <laughs> He's just an itching to hit that arm. It was an expensive yeah. hold. I want to once again highlight how well Paparazzi actually played that for a moment. Like He turned into the Ember Spirit, got Slide of Chains, uh, Slide of Fist off, got Chains off, got Flame Guard off. He dropped low on health, turned back into the Morphling to get full health again, continued fighting, almost survived that, but ultimately they did lock him down with all of their stuff. Yeah. How many buybacks was that? It was the Medusa, the Ember, the Darkseer. Was there a third one, or a fourth one, rather? I think that's what they used. Yeah. And only one used from Vichy Gaming, the Lion. 
Indeed. So another big gain for Vici, although a lot of experience obviously going the way of mid one, should not forget that. Sure, he doesn't get all that gold, but a lot of XP is now to level 22 after all those kills, so can start to feel on par in levels. Oh, yeah, yep. going to so jump in, they're going to try to take out this pesky puck, they'll do so. Nice Takes kill. waning rift as a little treasure for himself, as their prize puck, of course does have buyback for seven, or the death timer for 75 seconds, but buyback is available. Oh, well, let's see if Secret can do it again. <laughs> this reminds me of game one. It does, it does. That The first pickoff, he would need to buy back and then die again. But it's the puck this time. I feel like Paparazzi is way too strong. They'd have to do it to him, if anyone. Yeah. I mean, he counts as about... I don't think they can do it on Ori. I actually don't right think now. they can blow him up fast enough. Yeah, it's, it's very... I mean, unless he makes a huge mistake. If there's, like, any backup behind, I think they can save him. We'll see. They're going to try. Oh, Anisus onto the low ground, into the Enchant Totem. They're going to try to take him out. He's at half HP, but pops his BKB, and they're going to turn around to Puppy. And down he goes. Shiva's is applied. The roll in by Lanham, trying to find some more kills. Looks like Fata will be next. That's two dead. Exorcism is used, though, as Lanham trying to find some more. Doesn't look like... He'll be able to do so. Yapsor, able to TP out in time. Yeah, this time, Vichy were ready for it. Learned from game number one. Didn't make the same mistake again with being too overconfident. They choose to send out the tankier hero in Ori, close to the ledge. He gets jumped, but immediate counter response from the line, who did have the Blink Dagger that time, and the Earth Spirit gets them two easy kills. There's no Roshan yet. I think Vichy would love to get that right now as a collateral, but maybe instead they're just going to try to run down mid and get some tower damage, or Rax damage rather, but no Exorcism. I don't think they know about the no buyback status on Shaker. They know that Darkseer doesn't have one. But they might Amadusa. just chance it here. This fight could actually go wrong for Vici Gaming if they do it. I think they're not going to do it. Need to wait for that exorcism. Their Medusa or their Death Prophet is so much worse without it. And she's almost not even a hero. Well, Spirit, Spirit Siphon's actually yeah. quite good. Spirit Siphon, Shiva's Guard, Yules. You know, there's still some pretty good utility with the Silence, but it's half the hero. The ult for sure. So. Gonna wait, control the area here, stay on the high ground, not let Secret move out around this area. Secret will definitely not go there right now. They have no control whatsoever. They will play around the top where they feel safer. And now Morphling and the rest of Vichy Gaming will probably push down toward bottom. He actually just used his buyback money on a... A yeah, butterfly. A butterfly, that, so a bit of an opportunity maybe for Team Secret if they find him, but there's, there's a no double way. damage. I mean, there's no way they know that, of course. Uh, oh my god, he is so hard right now. 700 damage. Yeah. Let's see him kill but, his dragon. Ah, oh, come on. But uh, the wall, Sindarin, his yeah. illusion is quite strong. Boom, boom. Okay. Right, not that was maybe a black not dragon. as much damage as we thought. Let's look at the shrine. One, two, okay. three, four, five, six, seven. He hits okay. more than tiny now. Yeah. Towards One, structures. Two, okay. That was a creep way. Or uh, <laughs> camp. You seem so, very enthralled by, <laughs> by this double damage. I always like seeing uh, high damage heroes with double damage. Something about it. Well, Roche is about to spawn, but Vici Gaming are actually going for an aggressive play instead. I think this is oh, a ace. bit risky. Oh, the oh, coil uh. misses. The waning rift to follow. Will they follow through or not? Two waveforms used. Looks like Secret's going to try to turn this around on the mistakes that Vici have made, but the BKBs are popped galore. Looks like Puppy's going to be first to fall, so no Echo Slam being used in this fight. Looks like Ace uses that ult to get a nice telekinesis. A lot of damage being applied, but the, the push through with Lan M might not be able to get out himself. The sacrifice will be worth it, though, if that comes to be. Yules onto Death Prophet. They're going to find the Earth Spirit at the end of the day, and Ori's in a lot of trouble now, getting slowed by Viscotti. Can they do enough damage to finish him off? It looks like it will be the case. So two dead for Vici Gaming as Secret want to continue the pressure. Fenrir looks to be next. That's going to be an easy pickup on the way. Can they find more? Paparazzi, of course, the big prize. And no buyback to speak of, like you said, but not getting really close to... Uh, yeah, that, that, that was actually really bad for Vici Gaming. They miss the coil on the opening, they go in with Morphling's BKB, so they commit two of their really key abilities to get almost nothing forced. They have to use the Exorcism and run in with the Death Prophet, so they used everything on the fight. That was really hard just because they missed the coil. Like, sometimes you just gotta cut your losses and, and let it be, but they still went for the kill. Secret punished them, oh, and now Young Eleven, 11 is oh in my, a really bad position. Damage. Jules is there, mid one pops the wand. A little bit of extra mana to work with. Where will Young Eleven try to go? Doesn't matter, he's dead. He does have buyback though, 82 seconds if he's not going to yeah, use They it. have to spend buybacks to not give this Roshan to Secret. And <laughs> Game one? <laughs> Throwing so much of Game their lead away one. right now. Secret definitely have a good opportunity to bring this game back in their favor, but Morphling is the beast in this game. Can you control him? If you can take him out, still no buyback for a thousand gold. Roshan, uh, Secret don't have 75%. The, they don't HP. have the damage for this Rosh. They don't do it fast enough. Mid one's gonna gamble here. He's just like, maybe I can find an opening. He's gonna go around the back. 
And Ichi Gaming, will they get caught? Land him in a good position here. He sees Puppy. Could blink and stun him at any time to prevent him from going in. One, here comes the Yapsor initiation. They're gonna try to blow up the pump. There's the back and the wall. Will it be on the Morphling is the question. Pops the BKB and just right clicks that Darkseer down easily. We'll have to find a different avenue as the wall is in the way. But Sika oh, do take out doing another a lot hero. Of the back, Buybacks though. under the Death Prophet. That's two for one right now. One buyback into the game from Yapsor. Fenrir in the meantime being isolated, but on the backside in the river. Ori trying to catch up to Ace. Not a whole lot of mana right now as Morphling attempting to catch up. There's the E-Blade, there's the Adaptive Strike, and there's the death. Double kill for Ori. A two for three with a buyback on Yapsor. And we'll see if Vici came and can find any more. Yapsor and company looking to p potentially defend this. Puppy's yeah. still with that Echo Slam. Certainly making it exciting here, Vici came. <laughs> they do, go they do it for the fans. Oh, Ember's oh, back. Ember is here. Mid one dealing tons of damage. Looks like Lion will find his way to the grave just barely with that Flame Guard. So nice kill for Secret again. Nice dodge as well from, from mid one. He's warming up now. Only one buyback in the game right now, by the way. This is when mid one is at his best, when he starts getting items on Ember Spirit. I think he's, this is like his most comfortable position in Dota in general. Farmed on this exact hero. It's when he shines the most, and he's been doing a lot of work in these last fights for Secret. It feels like after he got that Mjolnir, it really changed his game. Doing so much damage in every fight. They're obviously very extended fights, and if he doesn't get kept caught in the back, he gets to consistently throw out those slights of fist. Well, Yapsar's gonna get a steal off. He got the Crypt Swarm, not the best steal, not the worst. He can push some waves. And mid one will maybe do some damage to this top tier one tower that Secret have yet to claim. Minute 45. <laughs> it's half HP. Uh, Pretty interesting interested. gold breakdown here between mid one and, well, I don't know, this, this doesn't really tell the whole story, I feel like. The lane creep's obviously a pr pretty big deal, but overall, Ember Spirit had a very rough start. That's yeah, kind of the issue, right? Absolutely. But he's come back in spades, no doubt about it. And that Radiance might have a lot to do with it, actually. He picked it up. And yep. ever since then, has been farming to a high degree in these fights. And he, so... he feels like Weeha in a lot of ways, where once you get a lot of these items, very good spellcaster with itemization usage in yep. fights. Absolutely. Very good at clicking them buttons, in other words. So what buybacks do we have now? This is like the most important thing. Only more fling. Okay. We'll probably see him play pretty aggressive. There's a smoke from Beachy Gaming. Puppy's gonna fissure and blink away, I guess. No, not even blinking, that's pretty confident. Lanham is running around the back. If he fights literally anyone, he's gonna instant Yules oh, and try to set up a fight for them, I think. Mid one, very aggressive right now. Has a sleight of fist, obviously, with the searing chains. Gonna find Paparazzi, he's already getting very oh, low. No. He gets Hex and brought down. No buyback. No buyback, 120 seconds. Oh, he was not ready for that and Hex. this is definitely, we have a double damage as well. Of course, it's past 40 minutes, so increases the chances of oh, getting dear. one of those bad boys. As there's another Hex, this time onto Puppy. Not gonna get stunned, he gets a nice blink off. Paparazzi's on the hunt now. He feels oh, like yeah. absolute god mode. He could go back to Roche. Should be a fairly safe Roche for Vici Gaming. Five against four without the Ember Spirit, one of the absolute strongest heroes in the game right now. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two. <laughs> Oh my Nine, god. Ten. Meanwhile, while you're counting like a juvenile, Puck is 35, dead. 35 90 attacks for Roche. Seconds. 35. 90 seconds on the deck in this mid rack a bit damage. of trouble. Ace is going to continue to hit from the low ground. No buyback on Puck. It. This is a huge deal. Bottom rack right. is dead and Secret are okay. somehow staying in this game. Okay, Lanham. Lanham jumps in, gets telekinesed into the fissure and into the right clicks. Ace has to pop the stone gaze. Might be a waste. He's going to try to get out, but that TP is cancelled. He gets turned into a stone, though. And into that wall as well. We'll see how much damage that illusion is going to end up doing. But it looks like they're going to bring down that very tanky Medusa. 99 seconds, but does have buyback. Paparazzi. Yules. 16 Bonus and 2. Kill here. Yules onto Fata into the silence, into the right clicks with the Scotty. Telekinesis is there, though. Oh, nice nice shot from well. the And the Fisher completely blocks them off. Has to use that second waveform. Trying to find Fata Could in the morph trees. Into him, maybe. Didn't see him. Just Looks barely like got out. the end of that engagement. Tier 4 is taking damage in mid, but Secret have a decent amount of buffer on them still, so getting time to go back, push out the mid wave will puppy. How are they staying in this game? <laughs> <laughs> it's very impressive. Now, Refresher Shard is online on Ori together with Aegis. They have chosen to give the Aegis a Death Prophet this time, I guess because of that Refresher Shard, so now they can use the ulti twice. Now it actually is really useful to have it. 
generally transformation heroes don't really want to have that Aegis, but now it's pretty good. They've given the cheese to Paparazzi, probably because he has buyback and Ori doesn't, and this is like the safer approach from yep. Vici, so showing very good understanding of the risks. And oh, Echo Slam used, Impale to follow though, and here comes mid one, dealing tons of damage. Ori half HP with the BKB activated. The Morkling died right off the bat, he was full agility, so they just found the great initiation for Secret. Now here's the Hex, see if they can find some more. Young Eleven, nice fissure from Puppy again. They're gonna try to take, there's a refresher, Ori pops the BKB. Young Eleven with the nice coil onto two heroes, into the crit form. Here comes Paparazzi, he bought back into the game and he's dealing a ton of damage. Double kill for him, Puppy looks to be next on the list. That is gonna be a third kill from that buyback, well worth it if you are Vici Gaming. And here's the buybacks now from Secret being used to full effect, two there. And Vici, see if they continue the pressure or not. Ori still with the Exorcism, that was the refresher shard I do believe. Yep. He has the Aegis, but that second life is not so useful now that he's used Indeed. to his shard. If they can get Paparazzi here, this will be a dieback. Here comes Fata with a back into the wall, into the right clicks. But Ori taking lots of damage on the sideline. Morphling and company, they get the rack. They should be happy with this. Ori, he gets Searing Chains, has to pop BKB again. He's extremely fast right now. Lan M rolling out. Ori might be the sacrifice if they're not careful. The figure does not connect with Ori, though. Lan M looks to be doing that for his team. And down he goes. So 40 seconds with no Puck, 82 with Aww. no Earth Spirit. Mid one has the Red Man recharge talent. He keeps having searing chains. He gets healed up thanks to the Exorcism. Gets silenced into Telekinesis and the Fissure. Can they actually finish him off? With Fenrir and Paparazzi, it's very tricky here for Seeker. They can continue to try to CC this Death Prophet. But Paparazzi deals so much damage, they have to fear that. They will take him down. That is the Aegis, though. And Morphling has to pop the BKB. Mid one and Secret will continue to try and chase either hero. Go for for this Morphling, ages. this should be he's huge. Still. Taking Hello. Bait. Hold. He's going to go down if he's not careful. This is going to be a huge kill for Secret. And down he goes. 120 seconds, no Morphling. Can Secret actually do this? At the very least, this bottom racks will be flying, if not more. The mid racks not available for the taking. They could just go straight for throne. No creeps, though. The fortification's there. Refresher oh, the back orb. The protection. Creeps now are coming in. Refresher orb on Ori. All right, he's going to have double exorcism. The, his actual ult just came up as well, so no morphling, though, for 100 seconds. Here comes the coil. Onto two heroes. On, <laughs> he's actually stole it. Did. Did the Rubik, and Ori's gonna pop the BKB with that Exorcism Ace. Trying to kite him to a high degree. He's gonna get stunned up. Can they bring him down again? There's the wall. He's taking tons of damage. There's a right click. There's the Echo Slam. Puppy takes him out, and Secret are gonna force this to a game five. Some way, <laughs> somehow. How is this possible? How? How, Cinderin, how? Explain this to me. Game five of this best of five coming up soon. My lord. Secret. From the depths of hell have come back in two games. 